Hello everybody, welcome back to the Life's Good. Sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for. That's what my gran used to tell me. I've heard that one several times. We had a long period with no rain and I was wishing that we had some rain to water the plants in my garden. Last week it started raining and it's still raining a week later. <laughs> We've had more than our fair share guys. I'm not complaining, it's doing the ground good, it's doing the garden good, everything's looking lush and green. But I've got a few things I wanted to do that the rain's now stopping me from doing. So you can't have it always, can you? Uh, on a couple of afternoons, I was uh, at a loose end as to what to do. I had a few bits of scrap wood and odds and ends in the shed. And I set to building this. Um, I'll just explain that in the northeast of England, sparrows are not called sparrows. They're called spuggies. This is a sparrow house. Uh, it's a bird box that has three. You can see one on that end, one in the middle, one on that end. It's got three sections to it. So there are three bird boxes in one and sparrows or rather spuggies are social birds they like to nest and congregate in family groups and I'm rather hoping that this little sparrow box is going to attract the sparrows the spuggies in and start using and I intend to put this on the end of the shed where I've already got that one solitary bird box which hasn't been used. I don't know whether it's in the wrong location for the tits and so on and so forth, or whether the box is too deep for them. I really don't know, but I'm going to replace it with this. And oh, I've written on there, Spuggy Villas, and that's going to be their address should they wish to move in. It's got a couple of little brackets on it to hang on the wall, bit of old roofing felt over the top. And, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. I think that should be, uh, that should look good on the shed and be a great little home for the spuggies. Just going to pop it down. Now I have been absent for a while. You would have noted that I haven't put a video on since the uh, fire pit. Reasons for that, I've been busy at work. We've been busy indoors doing a few things. The weather's been very inclement. And in addition, over my shoulder here, the garden behind Daisy's Run, that house there, are having an extension built and they've been digging the footings and pouring concrete, laying bricks. And with uh, petrol driven cutting machines and a digger and a cement mixer, and a radio and two or three builders shouting at each other. It's very difficult making a video with all that going on in the background. In addition, two doors down, have had a new conservatory installed and they were having the footings dug out and bricks laid and all manner of equipment running there. And a little bit further down, they're having their chimney repointed and some other work done on their house and they've had scaffolding erected and all of these guys have been working this last week while I was out here thinking of making a video. And honestly, you couldn't hear yourself think, guys. There was so much noise and movement and all sorts going on. So I decided not to worry about it. I, I stole myself away to the shed, made my spuggy box. I've done a few things in the greenhouse and I have managed to plant a few things out on the plot. So we're back here today. It's actually stopped raining momentarily. It's a bit chilly, but that hasn't stopped me coming out. I've got a few things to do. So I'll lift you off there and we'll have a little wander around and I'll show you what I've been up to on the plot. The first thing I wanted to show you was the beans that I planted against this little shed here. You can see my reflection in the window there, guys. Uh, that's actually my bike shed motorcycle shed 
and against it I've put some canes and I've planted some runner beans in the bottom here and they've all picked up and started to climb those poles so that's one little area that I didn't know what to do with that I've been able to grow some food so hopefully those beans will climb these canes and we will get a nice crop of runner beans from that little area there the strawberries are all coming through nicely I've got quite a few flowers here and strawberries following on as you can see there there's one or two um, incidentally one of these you can just see through the leaves there these strawberry plants have red flowers as opposed to the traditional white ones that you can see in the foreground there um, they are a variety that's an f1 hybrid and they're called tuscany cheryl purchased these a couple of years back and we've managed to increase our plants by layering the runners and growing some more and they make a lovely large succulent strawberry so we're looking forward to those so the f1 tuscany i'm not sure of the variety of the the others uh bog standard strawberry i'm sure they have a name but i for the like of me do not know <laughs> what it was or is so we're looking forward to a few strawberries from that small patch the shallots are doing really well since the rain has started falling these have come on fantastic and as you can see each one or most of them if you look in the bottom of there you can see it's splitting into several so you plant one shallot or onion set or shallot set in the ground and as they grow you can see that one it's a good example they split into several others and you can get as many as four or five or even more you look in that one there guys i think there's six in there from one shallot you actually grow six as they split there's probably even more than that in that one and these i'm growing specifically for pickled onions although uh, i think i've said this before a lot of the countries or the world's top chefs will tell you that a shallot is much nicer in your cooking than a standard onion i suppose it depends on the dish and you do get different types of shallot you can get banana shallots you can get red ones and you can get yellow ones and some have got strong flavors and some are mild these i'm growing as a standard yellow shallot and uh, i do think I, if i remember rightly i did buy some red as well or some pink so there is a variety here but as i said predominantly for pickled onions the garlic behind has started to come through you can see that and incidentally you can see those other plants in amongst them i do believe they're either courgette or pumpkin now those seeds must have gone through the compost bin and when i've taken the compost from that bin and spread it on the soil to improve my soil some of those seeds have actually still been active and they've germinated so i have a few extra plants growing there that maybe will produce some courgette pumpkin or something of that nature for us as well as the garlic in that area so that's a little bit of a bonus i might have to remove a couple of them because they do get quite big the rhubarb's still very prolific we've been pulling rhubarb and using it for pies and crumbles very nice rhubarb crumble with a bit of custard the potatoes have gone really mad guys they i was watering them frequently myself i haven't had to with the rain falling on them although I do check the tubs to make sure that the foliage isn't keeping the water out but I've got three good looking tubs of potato there and indeed on the next path down you can see three tubs of potatoes there and I've got more here these two large tubs here full of foliage and indeed further back next to the greenhouse including of course underneath all that foliage is the shopping bag with potatoes growing in i'll just swing you back this way you can see the peas are coming up nicely i've got a couple of small rows of peas here and they are indeed in flower if you look there you can see the flowers on there and hopefully they will be producing some nice pods filled with lovely juicy peas uh, the area behind <laughs> there is actually a potato growing there i did not plant it there it's occurred there again it probably got moved in 
with the compost. It's either from a, a bit of peel or a small potato that was in there and it's germinated and growing there. I might leave it in place. It's not in the way at the moment, but I do need to use that area there. There's one or two weeds growing on that part now, I see. But uh, I want to put some more produce in there. Um, probably swede, cabbage, broccoli, something of that nature. I've got a few ideas of things I'm still uh, sowing and growing. So I'll show you something about those in a moment. The carrots are doing really well, although there's a few gaps. Remember I had Daisy out one day and she, quite as a chicken would do, set about scratching this corner all about the place and she's destroyed my row of carrot here. Although they're in the ground and they are growing, they just spread out a bit. And uh, if you look back further, you can just about make out that there are rows of carrot across there. And behind that, parsnips. And in the far corner, in the front there, a tub of potatoes. And behind them, my broad beans. In fact, I'll walk over there. I'll show you these broad beans, guys, because they have got lots of flour on. As you can see, lots and lots of flour on there. Each one of those flowers should produce a nice broad bean pod. Looking forward to harvesting those. And if we peep through the door of the fruit cage, I'll open it. It's a bit stiff because it's swollen in the rain, but uh, I'll open that. Get you in here. Look at these babies. We have an abundance of currants in here. Masses of black currants, which we will be using for making jam, possibly wine, fruit pies, crumbles, and all that sort of thing. So that's something we're looking forward to as well. I did plant some straw flowers. Uh, no, these are corn flowers actually, guys, next to Daisy's run. Isn't that right, Daisy? Yes, you got some corn flowers growing next to your house. You have. Um, not such a good idea, they're hanging all over the pathway. They've got a few buds on, they're going to flower. The idea being that they should attract pollinating insects into the garden. Um, in hindsight, it's probably not the best place to grow these flowers. <clears throat> but what I have done further back is I've used that little strip there. Didn't know what to do with it. So I popped in some Lolo Rossa and some spinach along there. And uh, they're doing really well. They're, they're growing really well in that little spot. And we've been taking some of those using them indoors and a few spinach leaves have been passed on to Daisy I'm quite sure she's looking through the wall of her cage here looking at those thinking I wish I could get my beak on those well <laughs> she does get some we do throw them in now and again for her bless her if we walk back in here the little salad plot we've actually finished the radishes there was radishes all around this area guys but adjacent to them I've got another row all this on this edge is radish that incidentally is more runner beans in this tray here they're doing really well very pleased with those they need to be planted out soon but where the radishes were I've now planted some cabbages I would sown the seed in the greenhouse they grew I've hardened them off and I've popped those in this gap so we've got some cabbages coming on here the chard next to it spring onions still here just waiting for those to thicken up a bit. Although a couple of them diced in a sandwich or in a potato uh, what was potato salad. Cheryl makes a nice potato salad. She dices uh, spring onions into that. Really nice. But I like them a little bit more mature, a little bit thicker. Sort of, uh, I don't know, pencil thick maybe or a bit thicker than that. Behind that, the Lola Rossa. We've been using lots of this. Now we don't take the whole lettuce. We just take the larger outer leaves, take them indoors, rinse them off and put those together with a few other ingredients to make nice salads. And hopefully these will sustain us with salad leaves for quite some weeks to come. Just above that in that hanging basket, that is uh, Mizuna and all year round lettuce. I had a spare hanging basket, bit of compost, threw the seed in. And although it's going to seed, I notice this Mizuna, the leaves again added to salads are absolutely wonderful. Now the other thing I was going to show you, I'll just go back to the peas because 
if I just lift you over the top, in between the two rows of peas, now you've got the, the first row here, and the second row back there, and in between I've put some broccoli. The calabrese, the green type broccoli, I've planted those in between. So by the time we harvest the peas, that broccoli will be growing on, maturing, and uh, I'll be able to leave that in place there and let it grow on. And as we remove some of this other produce, I shall be replacing it with more winter vegetables, i.e. the cabbages, other greens. Now that leads me on now to something I've... Well, it's Cheryl, actually. Cheryl picked these up. I was wanting to grow some Cavallo de Nero, which is a really nice spinach-type vegetable. It grows quite tall. It's a type of kale, as you can see on the packet there. Um, lovely dark green leaves, like a curly kale, but long, long and tapered. Very lovely with your hot dinners. Absolutely gorgeous. Cavallo Nero, a nice uh, brassica. It's got long dark green leaves. <clears throat> Very good yielding. And uh, the idea being you just take the leaves you want from the plant, tear them off, cut them off, whatever, take them indoors and leave the plant in the ground to continue growing. So hopefully during the winter, I'm going to have a crop of Cavallo de Nero, spelt that way, guys. Um, sow them now in trays or containers and they eventually harden them off, plant them out and that will supply us with some really good greens for the winter with our hot meals. The other things I got sitting in the greenhouse here, um, not much left in here now really. Uh, I got three pumpkin plants there, gherkins here, there's a little tub of gherkins there. I'm going to be planting those in a sort of a long uh, trough type container and I'm going to lift out this shelf. That shelf there is removable. I made it that way when I popped it in. I clear the floor off below and I will sit that container on the floor with the gherkins in and grow those gherkins up the back wall of the greenhouse. I shall probably have to provide some sort of a, a, a mesh or a frame or something for them to climb up. But those gherkins, I'm looking forward to uh, having those again pickled. They're a type of cucumber, uh, the gherkin variety. They're very small, small and spiky. But uh, I've never made my own gherkins or pickled gherkin. And that's something I'm going to do this year, providing these mature and give me some produce up against the back wall of my greenhouse. Now in front of there, I've got some tomatoes coming on. Uh, they're Elsa Craig, incidentally, and some chilies here, red cayenne chilies. Uh, we've got some straw flower there that need to be pricked out, planted out, or put into containers or tubs, or in fact out around the garden, and some marigolds as well. So they need to be sorted and put somewhere and allowed to grow on. And un under this little bit here, you're probably wondering what I've got here. Um, I've, I've actually sown some more peas here. And we had a bit of a bother with some mice. They've been coming in and pinching my peas. So I've sown some more in there. I was hoping to get at least another row of peas in the ground. But I've, I've covered them with those plastic containers in an effort to keep the mice off. I'm not too sure whether it's successful. But I've got a couple mature ones there which can go out in the ground. So I'll do something with those peas. I'm not going to waste them. And I was just looking at the maximum minimum thermometer on the wall there, guys. And you can see the hottest it's been. Actually, it, that's in the last oh, 10 days, I think. It's 10 days since I reset it. So in the last 10 days, at one point, it was 39.9 in here. That's nearly 40 Celsius. That's pretty hot. Um, currently 17, and it's been as cold as 4.2. No heating. I haven't had to put any heating on or anything of that nature. The weather at this time of year, you would expect to be warm enough to sustain a nice temperature in the greenhouse. So that's the state of play with regard temperatures here. Currently 17, the door's open 
in fact. So although it's feeling chilly, uh, there's a bit of breeze and there's a bit of fog and uh, it has been raining. But even though all of that, the doors open in the greenhouse, it's still 17 degrees in there. Well, I think that's about it for now, guys. Um, as I said, apologies for not putting anything on sooner. Uh, it's been a bit of a crazy week or so. Uh, if I just, just before we go, I'm just going to lift you up there. That is the bird box that I was mentioning on the back of the shed there. That one box or single box has not been used. And I'm thinking it might be a bit too deep for the uh, things like blue tits and great tits and things like that that like to use these bird boxes. So I'll take that down. I might reduce it in depth, but I'm going to replace it with the little sparrow house or spuggy house that I showed you at the beginning of this video. It's sitting up there. I intend to get out here and put it up. Um, that might be a bit of a difficult task with all this underneath, so I'll have to work out how I'm going to get up there and do that. And at some point in the not too distant future, I have to refelt the shed. The felt up on that roof is damaged. Some pieces are missing and I am getting water inside the shed. I do have a new roll of felt. When I come to do that, guys, I might actually make a video of that because a number of people say to me, how do you put felt on a shed roof? I've done it before. And someone said, well, how do you go about it? What do you do? So I might do a quick video on felting the shed. Thanks for popping in, guys. It's always nice to see you. If it's your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Come back and see us again. Have a look through some of my older videos and see what it was like on this plot a year ago. Well, we're going to crack on, do a few things. So whatever you're doing, you take care of yourselves, you be safe, be happy, and we'll see you next time in the Life's Good. Bye-bye now.